Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you all for tuning in. Time to re-rank the Bon Jovi Studio Catalog. This time to include the brand new album, Forever. But I figured I would go whole hog and not only rank the 16 Bon Jovi Studio albums, but I also wanted to include the box set from 2004, This Left Feels Right, John Bon Jovi solo albums, and Richie Sambora's solo albums. So we got 24 albums to cover. So, let's get started. Coming in at the very bottom, number 24, This Left Feels Right from 2003. This is pretty much a ginormous swing and a miss. The only song on here that I really like is One of Dead or Alive. Anything else is so forgettable. Um, they just take all their most memorable songs from their catalog and make them really bland. Uh, this is a project that uh, just didn't land, so my least favorite in the Bon Jovi catalog is going to be This Love Feels Right. Coming in at number 23, Destination Anywhere, John Bon Jovi's second studio album, solo album, uh, released in 1997. I'm actually not a real big fan of this one either. Uh, this one just never really resonated with me, though there are some good songs on here, like Jenny, Don't Take Your Love to Town. Um, Every Word Was a Piece of My Heart, I like. August 7th, 415, by far my favorite song on the album. Otherwise, just never resonated with me. It's 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 decent, but uh, it's probably the one I'm least likely to reach for, aside from This Love Feels Right. Number 22, we're going to go with 2020, released in 2020. This is the uh, 15th of the band albums. Um, at this point, John's voice, I think, had really begun to deteriorate. This was the album that came before the the uh, tour that uh, John was notoriously not good on. Um, I, I think his voice just sounds really lethargic and lifeless on this album. Not to mention that a lot of these songs don't really land with me. I don't like Limitless at all. I don't like American Reckoning. Um, I'm not crazy about Blood in the Water. I may be one of the few, but that one does not do anything for me. This one does have some strong moments on it, like Do What You Can, Beautiful Drugs, Story of Love, even Lower the Flag I, I really like. Um, Unbroken has grown on me, so it's, it's not a terrible album. I still do listen to it from time to time, but it is definitely my least favorite of the band efforts. Number 21, let's go with John Bon Jovi, The Power Station Years. I think there's some nice songs on here. Um, a lot, I mean, they, it, this very much sounds like a predate to the band, but I do like Who Said It Would Last Forever, Open Your Heart, For You, um, Don't Keep Me Wondering. So there's some good songs on here. Um, pretty much the things that I like about the first album, I also like about this. Though the first album was a little bit more um, put together, I guess. Which makes sense, because this is basically just demos. But, uh, yeah. So I guess that all makes sense. Okay, right, coming in. Where are we at now? Coming in at number 20, I'm going to go with Richie Sambora's first solo album, Stranger in This Town. This is probably low compared to where I would imagine a lot of people would put it. Um, though this one has grown on me. Over the years, I used to own this one, and I actually wound up giving it away because I just never could get into it. I think the most recent couple of times that I've, I've tried to listen to it, it's begun to grow on me. I think it's an album that needs to be taken in its entirety, more so than one that you can just sort of select tracks here and there. I do think the album kind of gets better toward the end. I think the second half is stronger than the first half, though my favorite song of the album is Ballad of Youth. Uh, it's a very... Ooh, I don't know how I want to describe it. It's an album that needs to be taken, I think, in its entirety. I don't think uh, any individual track really stands out as much as most of these other albums. I think it's one that uh, really is better as a whole. But Stranger in This Town, to me, is going to be number... Where am I at? 20? Yeah, 20. 
number 19. Let's go with the very first Bon Jovi album, the debut. Uh, much like John's Power Station years, I think you have a lot of um, youthful enthusiasm on this album. This sounds like a very young band that is full of energy and full of determination, trying to make, trying to make it big. Happy to score a record deal, happy to be playing music. I think that's the real strength of this album. Runaway, of course. Um, I like She Don't Know Me, Shot Through the Heart. Uh, Burning for Love has a really great guitar solo that I always forget about. Um, I've always liked the album closer, Get Ready, as well. So, some really good stuff on here. Bon Jovi's first album is going to come in at number 19. Number 18, we're going to go with Burning Bridges, released in 2015. The Brown Paper Bag album or the Contract Fulfillment album. This one made out of songs that had not made previous albums is actually quite good for is actually quite good for an album of outtakes. Uh, some really strong songs and really unusual for Bon Jovi, like Teardrop to the Sea, a very unusual opener for a Bon Jovi album. It's it's darker, it's moodier. Um, we Don't Run, I think, is your kind of typical Bon Jovi rock song. Um, we All Fall Down, Life is Beautiful, good songs. I really love Love Blind Love. I think that one's great. Um, my favorite track on here, though, Burning Bridges, the title track, is really awesome and a lot of fun. Um, my unpopular opinion for this album is that I don't really like the song Who Would You Die For? That is a big fan favorite. It's probably the most popular song on the album. But unfortunately, I just don't get it. I've tried and tried to listen to that one and get into it, and I'm just not getting it. So, more power to you if you love that one. I kind of wish I was right there with you, but uh, I guess there's my that's my unpopular opinion for Burning Bridges. Coming in at number 17, we're going to go with 7800 Degrees Fahrenheit, second album. Um, a lot of cheese on this album. There really is. This is this is the the 80s hair metal cheese album for sure, but it is a lot of fun. Um, In and Out of Love, Price of Love I think is great. King of the Mountains, my favorite song on here probably. Um, Secret Dreams, To the Fire, so some strong songs. Um, a nice gem in the Bon Jovi catalog, but this is definitely the most 80s of the, of the 80s albums to me. So 7800 Degrees Fahrenheit, number 17. Number 16, let's go with What About Now, released in 2013. I'm probably a bigger fan of this album than most people. I enjoyed it when, I, when it came out. I still enjoy it today, though maybe not quite as much. Um, some nice standouts on here, like I'm With You, Pictures of You, That's What the Water Made Me, What's Left of Me, um, The Fighter, I like a lot. Into the Echo, one of the bonus tracks, great, great song. Should have been on the proper album, for sure. Um, this is the, so far, the last of the really colorful Bon Jovi album covers. But um, an album that, though Richie Sambora was a part of the band for, I think it's sorely missing his touch. Um, yeah, that's, that's about all i got to say for this one. I, I do like it more than most, but uh, it is going to come in fairly low, number 16. Number 15, I'm going to go with... John Bon Jovi's Blaze of Glory, uh, Young Guns 2 soundtrack, really, really strong material on here like Billy Get Your Guns, Miracle, Blaze of Glory, Blood Money, uh, Bang a Drum, one of my favorite uh, deep cuts um, in the whole catalog, whether it's solo or band, I think Bang a Drum is a great song. Uh, a couple songs on here that never quite stuck out to me, like Never Say Die, You Really Got Me. Now, um, Dying Ain't Much of a Living. They're, they're a good song. They, they're they just uh, songs that don't really uh, stand out to me. I don't usually find myself going to them unless I'm listening to the album as a whole. So, Bon Jovi's Young Guns soundtrack is number... I keep losing track here. <laughs> 15? 15 sounds right. So number 14, we're going to go with Richie Sambora's most recent solo album, that being Aftermath of the Lowdown, released in 2012. Um, I think an album that has some exceptionally strong tracks like 
Um, nowadays, he's always been one of my favorites. Um, every road leads back to, every road leads back to you. I think that's the name of the song. It's a, it, a great song. Um, Taking a Chance in the Wind, Seven Years Gone. Some really strong, really strong tracks. Pretty solid album overall. I think there's one or two songs I'm not like crazy, crazy about, but uh, in my opinion, very, very good album. Coming in right before that, we're going to go with uh, Undiscovered Soul. This is one that has my probably my two favorite solo songs from Richie Sambora that's Made in America and um, Hard Times Come Easy, which I think is fantastic. Um, I really forgot how much I liked a lot of these deeper songs, though. When I went back and revisited this one, I never did get around to picking up these two Richie Sambora albums, and I really need to because I think they are the uh, stronger two. And uh, they're, they're good albums, so I really need to track them down. But I never did get around to collecting them before I stopped getting CDs. And since I've kind of uh, gotten back into collecting uh, CD and vinyl, I just really haven't come across them. So I'm going to stick Undiscovered Skull, Undiscovered Skull, Undiscovered Soul in the... God, I don't even know where I'm at now. Undiscovered Soul is 13. Number 12. And from here on up, this pretty much is my upper echelon of Bon Jovi albums. I would say um, Undiscovered Soul, Aftermath of the Lowdown, Young Guns, What About Now, 7800 Degrees, Burning Bridges, and Bon Jovi is probably like my mid-tier. And then those, those bottom four are kind of like my bottom tier. So we're into my top tier already. Number 12, I'm going to go with 2009's The Circle. I love the sound of this album. It's a very big, anthemic sounding album. Um, some really good songs on here like We Weren't Born to Follow, When We Were Beautiful, Bullet, Superman Tonight, Thorn in My Side, Love's the Only Role, Fast Cars. So some really good stuff. I do revisit this one a lot. This one honestly does seem kind of low for me at number 12, but... When I was just comparing them to all these other uh, Bon Jovi albums, I think this is the one that just sunk to the bottom for now. I mean, I do this album or album ranking again in a couple months. Could be totally, totally different. I mean, this list is already different than when I did it last year. So, number 12, The Circle. And my cat wants to say hi. Alright, <clears throat> number 11. Let's go with the box set. 2004 box set, four discs of mostly unreleased or hard to find material. And as I've always said, I think you've got two great albums and a third good one on here. Um, some highlights for me, Why Aren't You Dead, Radio Save My Life Tonight, Taking It Back, um, Open All Night, I Get a Rush, um, The Original Last Man Standing, Starting all over again, though I think the uh, Keep the Faith era version is better. Um, Rich Man Living in a Poor Man's House is great. You Sleep While I Dream. Good Guys Don't Always Wear White, one of the band's most rocking tracks in their whole catalog. Um, let's see, Edge of a Broken Heart. Uh, Only My Dreams featuring Tico Torres on vocals I really love. I um, always liked Real Life quite a bit. Memphis Lives in Me with Dave Bryan on vocals. Um, and then the fourth disc, probably the weakest of the four discs in my opinion, but still Rivers Run Dry is a really strong track, as is Gotta Have a Reason, which is one of my favorites on the whole box set. So tons of great material here. It's amazing to think they had this stuff just laying around that didn't make albums, which makes me really, really excited for the potential box set we may get next year. So um, the box set going to come in at number 11. <clears throat> number 10, let's go with This House Is Not For Sale, released in 2016. I thought this was a very strong album when it came out. I still listen to this a lot. I still love it. I like the title track, uh, Living With A Ghost, Born Again Tomorrow, Roller Coaster, um, Devils In The Temple, Reunion is great, Come On Up To Our House. So, a lot of strong songs in here. A couple songs I'm not that into, and uh, that is why... This one is going to come in at number 10, and the new one, Forever, is going to come in at number 9. 
um, because I really do like these two roughly the same. But I think this this one has more what I would consider weaker tracks than this one does. So that's that's the deciding factor. But yeah, I do have Forever at nine. I've been enjoying this one all day. I've listened to it pretty much nonstop since it dropped, and I love pretty much eleven of these twelve songs. The other one, Kiss the Bride, it's okay, but uh, some stuff, really strong stuff on here in my opinion. We Made It Look Easy, Living Proof, Waves, Seeds, People's House, Walls of Jericho, Living in Paradise, Hollow Man, um, strong album in my opinion. I really like this one. Number nine. Number eight, let's go with New Jersey, released in 1988. Um, got Lay Your Hands On Me, Bad Medicine. Uh, Born to be my baby, which uh, here's another unpopular opinion within the Bon Jovi catalog. Um, it's pretty well known that Born to be my baby and We Weren't Born to Follow have like the exact same chorus, just with different lyrics. But uh, my unpopular opinion is I prefer We Weren't Born to Follow. <laughs> Sorry. Still like Born to be my baby though. Uh, Homebound Train is great i love that one stick to your guns um love for sales kind of a fun little day to close this one out so i got new jersey coming in number eight spot number seven let's go with 2005's have a nice day um another solid album probably i would say that this is the um this is probably considered the best of the post 2000s era um at least that's what it seems to me. Uh, can't go wrong. Have a nice day. I want to be loved is great. Uh, who says you can't go home? The band version, not the Sugarland version. Last Man Standing. I Am. Nova Kane. Story of My Life. So you really can't go wrong with Have a Nice Day. It's going to come in at number seven for me. Number six, I'm going to go with the ever underrated Bounce. Um, this one's really a tale of two different albums. You got. The heavy album, which is like Undivided, Parts of the Distance, Hook Me Up, Bounce, and then you've got the ballady album, which is Joey, All About Loving You, Right Side or Wrong, uh, Had Me From Hello. So it, it's there's kind of a strange um, play on this one where parts of it, um, parts of it is like one of the heaviest albums of the band's career. The other part of it is. Uh, filled with ballads but it works I like this one a lot I love Undivided I love Every Day I love The Distance I love Joey I love Misunderstood Hook Me Up I've grown to like Right Side or Wrong quite a bit uh, Bounce so some really underrated material on this one in my opinion Bounce for me comes in at number 6 number 5 we're going to go with Slippery When Wet the band's big breakthrough album um, of course you've got Classics like You Give Love a Bad Name, Living on a Prayer, and Wanted Dead or Alive. Um, I think this album has some really great deeper cuts like Let It Rock, the album opener, which I think is fantastic. Raise Your Hands is a great song. Without Love should have been a hit. Um, had they chose to release that as a single, I think it could have been pretty big. Uh, Wild in the Streets is a fun way to close it. So Slippery When Wet, for me, is going to come in at number five. Number four, Lost Highway. This might be my upset pick of the entire uh, of the entire ranking here, but I've always liked Lost Highway. I liked it when it came out, and it's done nothing but grow on me over the years. Um, I think I ranked it second last time, so I don't quite have it that high, but I still love this one. Lost Highway, Summertime, whole lot of leaving. We got it going on any other day. I love the way this one closes too with the last night one step closer and I love this town I think that's a really strong finish to the album but uh, this is quote unquote the country album but really it's just a Bon Jovi album with a bit of a country tinge to it I think this is a really fun summertime album Lost Highway for me comes in at number four number three let's go with the underrated these days underrated maybe not by the fan base but by the I guess the outside world probably doesn't know this album the way they know Slippery When Wet or New Jersey, but this one is fantastic. This is the the dark album of Bon Jovi's catalog. Um, some really 
moodier tracks, more introspective tracks, uh, songs like Hey God, one of the angriest tracks in the band's catalog, Something for the Pain, I love. Um, these Days, I love. Uh, my Guitar is Bleeding in My Arms, It's Hard Letting You Go, Hearts Breaking Even. Some really, really strong material on here. And there's just a plethora of um, outtakes from this era of the band, too, that are just... A lot of the box set really kind of seems to come from this era. Plus, you've got some great stuff um, that wasn't on the box set that is from the These Days era as well. So, I was just... and I, I might save this idea for another video, but I was just kind of looking at and, and compiling all this stuff. Like, These Days could have almost been a double album. <laughs> So I might I might do a video where I, I theoretically turn these days into a double album. Number two, I'm gonna go with Keep the Faith, released in 1992. Um, in my opinion, just a little bit stronger than these days. I think this one is a nice bridge album between the 80s and the in the uh, the these days sound. Um, this one does seem to have a little bit of a foot in the past with songs like I'll Sleep When I'm Dead, Blame It on Love, Rock and Roll. But uh, this album is largely moving towards the these days um, sound with songs like I Believe, Keep the Faith, um, In These Arms, Dry County, Bed of Roses, a um, little bit of Souls, and a, a good closer, Fear, really good song as well. And of course, the title track, Keep the Faith, is my favorite Bon Jovi song. So, um, really strong album. I think the, the weakest song, what, at least what I used to think was the weakest song, If I Was Your Mother, has grown on me. A little bit these last couple years um woman in love yeah that one's pretty much a filler but uh strong album really love this one so it's going to come in for me at number two keep the faith that leaves number one to be the album that introduced me to bon jovi which was crush um i was introduced to uh, bon jovi um, through my dad playing me this album in his truck it's my life I still love that song today, Say It Isn't So, Two Story Town, Next 100 Years, Just Older, Mystery Train, Captain Crash, kind of like my co-favorite or my 1A, 1B favorite with Keep the Faith, um, I Got the Girl, One Wild Night, so still got to go with this one. I think the tiebreaker is just the nostalgia, the fact that this was the one that introduced me to the band, because honestly, any of these top 12... <laughs> could at any given day be my favorite but i'm gonna stick with crush for now so there you have it that is the bon jovi catalog ranked from my least favorite to my favorite in the comments below play along let me know how you would rank the bon jovi catalog if you like this kind of content please give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel for more videos like this in the future and i will catch you then